In the headlines, construction on a 1.5 million US dollar emergency shelter in the Kainago territory to start in July. Dominicans have one more day to file their income tax as the filing season closes on 31st March. And high-level talks to improve the partnership between Dominica and the United Nations reach a satisfactory conclusion. I'm Andrea B with the Channel 5 News. Back with the details after this. Your old tablet? That's so 2020. Get a Samsung A7 tablet from Flow for only $99 when you sign up for a new All-In or All-In Plus bundle. Enjoy faster broadband speeds to surf and stream, more TV channels in HD to stay entertained, and unlimited flow-to-flow -flow fix minutes to stay in touch with everyone you love. So sign up today for a new bundle from Flow. Visit discoverflow.co for more information. Terms and conditions apply. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Dominicans being urged to exercise their civic duty and file their income tax ahead of the deadline on Wednesday. The filing period for a personal income tax runs from 1st January to 31st March each year. Assistant Comptroller of Audit with the Inland Revenue Division, Geoffrey Joseph, who was speaking on the Prime Minister's most recent annual pilot program, says it is important to make a declaration of personal income tax to know if an individual paid his or her correct amount of taxes. The act of filing PM is really important because it, you, you need to actually declare what your income is to the Comptroller of Inland Revenue, as you said earlier. And um, it is a different um, process from actually paying taxes mm -hmm. because you can actually file your taxes without having any liability if when we look at what the, what the law stipulates based on your income and your type of activities, you do not have to pay any taxes. So really filing taxes is, is a lot different from um, paying the taxes. The filing process is a matter of just making a declaration to the controller so that you can determine whether or not you have actually paid your correct amount of taxes. So it's a matter of verification, actually. Joseph encouraged Dominicans to look at the filing of taxes as their civic duty as it ensures the state functions properly. It is very important that persons um, see that as a civic duty, you know, a, 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 a process of, of, I would say, um, national pride. Because at the end of it, um, the tax collection is what the government really uses to ensure that the state functions um, properly. You know, um, we look at certain things as um, health care, um, education and so on. These things are, are, are widely supported, obviously, through the tax revenue that we have collected. So we see it as person's civic duty. You know, I, I, I think a person should look at it as an opportunity to contribute to the development of the state. Mm -hmm. And um, they should ensure that they, they file properly so that um, we can determine whether or not that they have paid the sufficient amount of taxes, the correct amount of taxes, I should add. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're not in the business of taking anything extra. Yes. <laughs> we're just here to ensure that you actually pay what is due or what you're supposed to pay based on the law. Dominicans are being reminded that the filing of taxes must be done via the paper-based format this year. Persons this year <laughs> are encouraged to file um, paper-based um, returns. Um, unfortunately, I guess with technology, certain things happen because we were um, effectively operating our online filing program mm -hmm. through our e-services. But we had some technical issues. So for this year, we are encouraging all persons to file the paper-based return. However, we have um, set up a, 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 I would say an online um, system 
where we have persons or persons are able to access our website. That's www.ird.gov.dm. Individuals can use the ird.gov.dm website to access the relevant form needed to file their income tax. In other news, almost two years after his business burned to the ground, one local businessman is seeking public support to help him get back on his feet. Emmanuel Fred Joseph, popularly known as the Juice Man, had his establishment in Portersville next to the beach. A nighttime fire in June 2019 saw the business go up in flames and Joseph out of a job. The juice man recalls that he had a very successful business before the fire and says clients have been longing for him to reopen. Oh yeah, I had a good business the night before I was full with people. Not the night before, the Saturday night. It was packed up with um, some white people, some locals and, um, and the Monday night it gone down in flames. They're longing to see me reopen because my customers was more or less senior citizens. You know, that want a place to come and hang out because the music wasn't loud and you know, the atmosphere is right. They can sit down, eat a pizza, eat a chicken and fries and you know, have a conversation, you know? Yeah. So they, they, they are the set of people that are really missing the place. According to the juice man, he has the design and an estimate of almost $150,000 to rebuild his enterprise. He says the past almost two years have been tough and he was only able to get just around $15,000 in donations thus far. Well, within that two years, it's very tough. I got some materials from a white guy that was down here, but he left, he left when it was the hurricane in the Bahamas, you know. He gave me some materials that cost maybe ten thousand dollars and be because of that I could set up on one side of the place but I, I, I missing some more some more some more material some more assistance so I'm just taking patience and waiting that's only I received but uh, my friends gave me a little 200 a little you know 500 and what and whatever you know Joseph is appealing to the public to help him rebuild his business in whatever way possible he is hopeful to have a section of his bar operational in time for tourists to return to the country. I would thank them a lot if they can donate some materials or cash or whatever, tiles, cement, or, you know, because I need all these things. Yeah, yeah. Well, summertime I should be ready with the first phase. And you see here is the ideal location for the tourists because we got a beach. And having a beach around your property is like a gold mine. Because they come from the port and they walk downtown and they stop here, that's the first stop, you know. So I have to make the place attraction, attractive and, you know, ready to go. For the time being, Joseph is only able to sell juice from a partially restored section of the establishment. In other top stories, the government of Dominica has engaged in high-level talks with the United Nations sub-regional team from Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. The aim of this discussion was to develop a more upscale partnership and better tailored support to meet the priority needs of the government and the people of Dominica. Dominica's delegation was headed by Prime Minister Skerritt and included cabinet members and senior ministers, while the UN's team was headed by its resident coordinator, Mr. D.D. Trebek, and included heads of UN agencies, funds and programs. According to a press release from the office of the Prime Minister, the virtual talks sought to reaffirm at the highest level the United Nations commitment to strengthening cooperation with Dominica. This includes identifying key priority areas or gaps to be addressed based on national strategies and development challenges, opportunities for advancing progress on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, and establishment of a joint national steering committee to provide oversight for effective program implementation, monitoring and reporting. During the talks, officials on both sides discussed ongoing projects and programs as well as opportunities for new partnership in all sectors. The government of Dominica looks forward to its continued partnership with the United Nations to realize the shared vision of achieving the SDGs, building a greener and more resilient future, and leaving no one behind. 
In other developments, JCI Dominica is looking to make history in the international community and needs your help to do so. Junior Chamber International, JCI, is currently on a search of honorees for the global initiative dubbed 10 Outstanding Young People of the World or TOYP. This selection is held every year, however, no Dominican has ever held that post. President of JCI Dominica, Janelle David, says if a Dominican is selected to become a TOYP, it would be a great accolade for the country. No Dominican has ever been under 10 outstanding young persons. And since 1983, JCI has honored more than 300 individuals from 57 nations. Past recipients of the TOYP award include such well-known personalities such as John F. Kennedy, Henry Kissinger, who was the former U.S. Secretary of the State, Elvis Presley, Jackie Chan, and many more. For a Dominican national to be in such a category would be an honor for JCI Dominica. This would be like a golden platter for the Commonwealth of Dominica and West Indies by extension. Individuals being nominated for the TOYP must be aged 18 to 40 years. The categories under which young people can be nominated include business, political, academic, cultural, humanitarian, environmental, and medicine. The Julian Chamber International 10 Outstanding Young Persons of the World is selected every year, and this program recognizes young persons or young people who excel in their chosen fields. And by recognizing these young people, JCI encourages them and others to seek excellence, create sustainable impact, motivate and serve others to be better leaders in society. The deadline for submissions is 16th April. Those selected for the TOYP will gather in Johannesburg, South Africa in November for the JCI World Congress. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Your old tablet? That's so 2020. Get a Samsung A7 tablet from Flow for only $99 when you sign up for a new All-In or All-In Plus bundle. Enjoy faster broadband speeds to surf and stream, more TV channels in HD to stay entertained, and unlimited flow-to-flow -flow fix minutes to stay in touch with everyone you love. So sign up today for a new bundle from Flow. Visit discoverflow.co for more information. Terms and conditions apply. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Welcome back. Construction on a 1.5 million US dollar emergency shelter in the Kainago territory to begin by July this year. The construction of this emergency shelter is being spearheaded by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, and the government of Dominica. On Monday, the design of that shelter was introduced to shelter managers and other stakeholders in the project for their input. Capital Projects Manager for Creed, Paul Mondesi, says it was important to hear from those using the facility on how best to improve on its functionality. That shelter will house about 125 persons and will be shortly, we are through the design, going through the design phase now. So we discussed the preliminary concepts and today we had those persons who would be managing those shelters, looking at the functionality. So it's not only how it looks, but to make sure that it's fit for purpose when it's inhabited by all those persons, which can be quite a challenging task. 
So we're looking at locations of bathrooms, we're looking at locations of kitchens, how you do deal with disposal, whether it caters um, in terms of energy, water provides all the needs. Mondesi admits the feedback from shelter managers has been very useful, particularly because they are the ones who will be supervising the people who use the shelter. We have an open plan layout because you never know who or how many from each gender would go into a location. So they've suggested that we have some heavy drips, movable drips, so that persons can get some privacy. So there are a number of small issues which we speak to function of the building. Not the design, not the architecture, but the function. When we get in there, how do we manage those persons? Some of the issues that we have, how we can prevent those issues in the design. So I think for that, from that perspective, it was important that we consult the, the shelter managers. The construction phase of this emergency shelter is expected to provide employment for people from the Kainago territory. This building will be about 1.5 million US. Um, if you add government's contribution, it will be about 1.7 million US dollars to design and build. We're doing the designs right now, um, but we will go out to tender hopefully by June. And so by July, August, we would have identified a contractor and uh, we can commence construction. Interestingly, in this construction, we're going to maximize the opportunity for persons from the Kalinago territory to be employed by whichever contractor is selected. So that's one of the criteria that we've agreed with with CDB. So it's really going to be a community project as well as a national project. And the cricket lovers around the country now have another option to follow the West Indies and Sri Lanka series in the Caribbean. Radio commentary of these matches is made possible through the purchasing of broadcast rights from Cricket West Indies by Vibes Radio. Senior news and sports reporter with the Vibes Radio, Alan Christopher, says the radio station takes pride in its broadcast of international sporting events. Vibes Radio has signed a two-year agreement with Cricket West Indies for exclusive radio commentary rights to all West Indies home international matches and regional tournaments. And that is ensuring that cricket fans across West Indies can follow every West Indies home international match and all regional tournament matches on their radio. Cricket West Indies has created this exciting new radio rights opportunity with Vibes Radio in Dominica to ensure that the magic of West Indies cricket can be accessed in every corner of the Caribbean. Coverage of the matches began in February with the CJ Insurance Super 50 Cup. This year, West Indies have a total of four home series, with the series against Sri Lanka already on the way. There is still South Africa, Australia and Pakistan in bilateral series to come and will run until August. The new partnership started with the CG Insurance Super 50 Cup, that's the 50 over tournament which was played at the Coolidge Cricket Ground and Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua. Marketing specialist with the JS Fan and Company Limited, which is sponsoring the broadcast of the cricket matches, says the company is committed to supporting West Indian cricket. We believe that you know West Indies cricket is a West Indian responsibility. Um, we also believe that West Indies cricket should be accessible to every West Indian, anywhere in the Caribbean, anywhere on the planet. You know, and so anywhere we can pitch in to support or promote West Indies cricket, as long as we can adjust the fan and company limited, then we will. I mean, after all, the West Indian diaspora is one of the largest diaspora groups in the world. So I guess it works, it works like well for us in that favor. helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better.
are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new all-in bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Your old tablet? That's so 2020. Get a Samsung A7 tablet from Flow for only $99 when you sign up for a new all-in or all-in plus bundle. Enjoy faster broadband speeds to surf and stream, more TV channels in HD to stay entertained, and unlimited flow-to-flow -flow fix minutes to stay in touch with everyone you love. So sign up today for a new bundle from Flow. Visit discoverflow.co for more information. Terms and conditions apply. To end the news, the headlines again. Construction on a 1.5 million US dollar emergency shelter in the Kayanago territory to start in July. Dominicans have one more day to file their personal income tax as the filing season closes on 31st March. And high level talks to improve the partnership between Dominica and the United Nations reach a satisfactory conclusion. Feel free to access our past newscast on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us next time.